hello, this is Something More, and I'm your host, Larry Sparks. Now today, we have an exciting program. I want to talk about what does it mean to walk in the power of the age to come in the here and now. You heard me, the age to come. Obviously, we think of heaven. We think of, I'm going to go to heaven when I die. But I want to tell you, the power and the authority and the glory of the heavenly realm is accessible to you now. Yes, now. And I have an exciting guest with me, Adam Thompson. Adam, a joy to have you on the program. It's to be here. And what I love about you, Adam, is that you, in a very practical way, but with great revelation, you have taught the body of Christ. Listen, there's this whole realm of heaven. There's these heavenly Mm. resources Mm. that are available to every believer, but they're accessible Now, it's not just a matter of when I go to heaven, it's how I can live in the here and now. So I want to I want to ask you this question because you have this great book called Living from Heaven to Earth. And you talk about a concept of being a spiritual highlander. Can you explain? I mean, I, I, I know a little bit about what that is. Can you explain, though, my benefit for audience benefit? What does it mean to be a spiritual highlander? Okay. well, um, through the power of the cross, Uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ through Calvary, we actually have access to the kingdom as sons and um, we've been adopted as sons. And um, uh, for me, I I, uh, live in in two realms and we we do actually need to um, function in this world with our with our earthly passports. Yeah, Yeah. we do have we are we do have a citizenship of heaven, uh, which is which we access and um, but in principle, it says in Ephesians 2, 6, that we are seated in heavenly places yeah. and we operate out of that realm uh, and we can access that through worship. Yeah. And like for me, uh, when I worship and come into that place of being intimate with the Father, mm. we come to the gate uh, of the kingdom and Jesus is the gate. And out of that realm, we can actually start to decree and we see so much in that pla- from that realm yeah. and uh, we can actually decree heaven to earth. Yeah, well, I want to stop right there for a moment yeah. because you're talking about worship. Worship is something that so many of us do. I even sense right now just the Holy Spirit saying, you know, so many churches, I mean, Remember back in the day, back in the 90s when praise and wor- there was the praise and worship movement. Yeah. And it was kind of limited to the charismatic Pentecostal world at the time where you had more mainline denominations who are a little bit you know, skeptical and they called it the worship wars. But now we look at all these different denominations, mainline denominations, yeah. ba- Baptist, Presbyterian, and they're all enjoying the kind of worship that we saw released into the earth in the 90s. I want to ask you what happens in the, what's, I don't want to say what happens, I want to ask you what's potential in an atmosphere of worship? Because again, so many believers come together Sunday mm. after Sunday, and we mm. sing some songs. Mm. What's the potential though? What can happen in an atmosphere of worship when we actually press into the presence of God? Okay. So what happens, with, uh, very interesting when you read John chapter 4 when the, the woman at the, was at the well and Jesus yeah. was waiting for this woman to come to the well. Eventually she was drawing water and she asked a question. Uh, she asked Jesus a question. She said that our forefathers and our, our fathers go to the, to the mountain to worship God yeah. and you Jews go to the temple to worship God. And Jesus said that there's a day coming where we can worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yeah. So uh, what actually happens in the, in, in the spirit, when we worship and we, we, we access the, the throne room of grace, uh, we actually come to that high place of the mountain in yeah. the spirit yeah. and we can, we can actually access the temple of God in the spirit. Yeah. And that helps us to have authority uh, when it comes to decreeing yes. uh, and, and releasing the miracles on the earth. It helps us when we come into that place of worship and we're, we're intimate with the Father, we actually have a, the authority to, cr- to decree from the gate. Yeah. And uh, it says in, the, in Jeremiah uh, chapter 7, verse 2, the Lord spoke to Jeremiah and said, Go to the house of the Lord and declare the word of the Lord from the gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so what happens is uh, many Christians are begging God in the valley, mm. right? They're begging God in the natural realm. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's quite a religious prayer when you're actually begging God. Yeah. But the reality is we have everything already. Yeah. We have access through the power of the cross. But when we worship the Lord, we, we go into that place where we, in the spirit, we worship the Father in spirit and truth. We access the throne room of grace. We yeah. enter the courts of praise. And then we can actually have authority to see and decree. 
Yeah. What I want to do is kind of wrap this section up because, again, we do these shows and we just kind of go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I love this concept, Ephesians 2, 6. I wrote it down here because we're very, uh, so many of us are familiar with that statement of being seated with Jesus, seated yeah. with Christ in the heavenly places. But as soon as you mentioned about worship, I just felt like the Holy Spirit wanted us to park on that because that is a way for so many believers. Again, mm. not just our charismatic friends, yeah, yeah. but in all these different churches and different denominations, I believe we're moving to this point where God just wants his people to encounter him. Yeah. And I love what you were saying because he wants the people to stop begging and start decreeing. Mm. So what I'm going to do is I just sense a word of the Lord and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass it to you to end this segment. Mm. And I just want to speak out of what Holy Spirit is saying right now concerning mm. worship. So I actually believe uh, even right now, if you're watching this, I want to encourage you to press into the presence of God. I just want to encourage you to lift your eyes and go up to where God is. And you might ask, how do I do that? By faith. By faith. It's not a matter of ascending a literal mountain, but like Adam was talking about. And Adam, I'm going to have you speak to this as we finish. Um, I want to encourage you just to go into his presence with no ulterior motive except to worship and adore him. Father, I thank you. I come before you mm. right now. I worship you for who you are. And I thank you as a result of that, your presence would just come and fill this place, fill this room, fill this location where I am. I believe the Lord's going to do that. Adam, what do you feel like the Holy Spirit is just saying in regard to that? And you can just talk to our well, friends who are watching. I believe this is a generation we're coming into. Uh, there's a generation God is seeking worshipers. Yes. And, uh, He's always, you know, he always seeks worshipers, but this is a time where there's a new breed rising. Yes. And uh, I believe uh, that uh, the Elijah, when I say the Elijah is coming, I mean it's a corporate group of people. Yeah, yeah. And there are, uh, there are people that worship the Lord and become intimate with the Lord and they move in power out of that intimacy. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's how we access the kingdom is through worship. Yes. And, um, and I do believe that there's a lot of people out there who are, who, who know the Lord, they're, they're, they're born again, but they're really going through a time of getting beaten up by the enemy. Yeah. The enemy is actually attacking the families, ta attacking yes. uh, their loved ones. But uh, when you actually encourage yourself, first you encourage yourself in the Lord when David did, uh, when uh, King David, when his men were going to stone him and, yeah. and, and then he encouraged himself in the Lord and, and then it actually disarmed the demonic powers around him. And I believe that what we've got to do is when we actually worship the Lord, encourage ourselves in the Lord, it disarms the, the, yes. the demonic powers and the heavenlies around us. Yeah. And we go straight into that place where we're, we're seated in heavenly places. Yeah. See, I had, a, I had an encounter of heaven um, yeah. uh, going back about six years ago. And I was on the sea of glass. And as I got closer to the throne room, there was all these empty seats. Wow. Completely wow. empty seats. And there was this voice that spoke to me when, and I thought, what, what's going on here? It must have been an event or uh, there's about to be an event, but there's no one here. And the Lord said, no, these are the seats of the saints that have been robbed from the revelation of what it is to be seated in heavenly places. Wow. Wow. My goodness. So there's so many people who are robbed from that revelation of yeah. what it is to be seated in heavenly places. So really we are... We are the true Highlanders. Yeah. Right? We live in that, in that realm. We operate out of that realm as sons. Well, and the cool thing is, stay right with us. We're going to go in our next segment. We're going to actually talk to you about how you can access this realm. Told you about what it is. We told you about worship being a key catalyst that will bring you into that place. But hang on there, and we're going to tell you how to access this heavenly realm. Larry Sparks, welcome back to Something More. Now, we're talking about how you live in two realms at one time. How do you live in heaven and on earth? Now, let me tell you this, that so many of us have received these promises or prophecies from the Lord. And you, you might be asking, okay, Larry, I've got this great prophecy. I got this great promise, but it has not come to pass. And you know what? I believe there is a process of stewarding a word of the Lord. 
That's the thing, you partner with it. So Adam, what I want us to talk about right now is how do you steward a prophetic promise from the word of the Lord? And, and, and you know, you have this great four stages, this four step process mm -hmm. to doing this, which I think mm -hmm. is very practical. Yeah. And I believe this is a key element of what it means to live in two realms at one time, living in, on earth and in heaven. So yeah. could you share that? Okay, quickly, the, the Lord has uh, uh, called us all to be prophetic. Yeah. He's, um, you know, He speaks to us all. Yes. And as we grow in our prophetic calling, He, he does bring correction to us. Uh, so He speaks to us first, kind of like when Jesus said in Matthew 11, he, uh, you know, take the plank out of your own eye before you take the speck out of somebody else's eye. So God speaks to us and he disciplines us. And there's nothing wrong with the word discipline because it's in Hebrews 12. And a father disciplines his son yeah. like uh, our heavenly father disciplines us. So first he, bring, he speaks to us uh, first to, to bring correction. And then the second stage uh, that he, he, he gives us the ability to, to be able to minister uh, in, 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 in the body of Christ when it comes yeah. to your church forum, in, 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 in your uh, church environment. Yeah, yeah. So you have influence over your, uh, over your church, but first you need to actually build a relationship with your pastor. Mm. And it's very important to build a relationship with your pastor as a prophet because there's many prophets can be a little bit you know, gun ho and they can go from church to church and hijack the microphone and yes. they don't have any accountability, but it's very important to build a relationship with your pastor and, and, and earn respect. And unfortunately in this world, you do have to earn respect. Yeah, yeah. Um, my father got a medal from the Queen of England and uh, he said to me once when I was a young child, he said that you have to earn respect in this mm. world. So. When, when it comes to being a prophet, you do need to build a relationship with your pastor. Someone said to me once that, well, my pastor doesn't receive the things of the Spirit and he doesn't understand the things of the Spirit. Well, you need to pray mm. and ask the Lord where you need to be. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, you need to go and fellowship somewhere where you are like-minded. Yeah, absolutely. And it says that in even Acts 2 when, uh, when God poured out His Spirit, they, were, they came together and they were like-minded. Yes. And, uh, and there was a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Mm. So it's important to, ha to, ha to have a relationship with your father, have, excuse me, have a relationship with your uh, pastor, yeah. I should say, and, um, and build credibility. And then, and then after you earn respect and you actually have that governmental role in the church as a prophet, then you, you, actually, uh, you, you can actually have that influence in the marketplace. Mm. So um, you can, for example, you, the dream interpretations or the prophetic uh, is very good for um, uh, evan you know, being an evangelist. Yeah, sure it is. Yeah. So um, uh, that way I've had a lot of influence in the marketplace like that. I was in China once and I was in the Bank of China in, in the boardroom and I actually was interpreting dreams in the actual boardroom of the yeah. Bank of China and I was ministering to some people there, some businessmen. And uh, when I was interpreting, dream, interpreting a dream to one of the businessmen in China, in the Bank of China, he, he started to tear up mm. and he was uh, very emotional. And he said that when I was a boy, when I was a young man, they told me there was no God. And uh, so I had the opportunity to pray for him and lead him to Christ. So we can have uh, influence in the marketplace. Yes. And then uh, we, we can go, come to a place where after we, we've done that, we come into a place where we have influence in, with the government, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the government arena. So um, I've done that in, in Papua New Guinea where I released a word in Papua New Guinea for the whole nation on the, on the uh, public radio. I released a prophetic word to the whole nation for seven million people. Wow, wow. And uh, also went into the... Uh, parliament and released uh, a word to some of the government officials. So, so that's how we go into these four stages. I yes. believe that God speaks to us first. He brings correction. And then we have influence in, the, in our church arena and then in the marketplace. And then in, uh, we actually have a, a, a play a part in a government role. Yeah. Well, what I want to do, because as you were talking about this, I'm sure some of our folks at home are thinking to my, that they're thinking, well, that's, that's great for Adam. And that's great. Those are great testimonies. And those are great stories because he's a prophet. But I actually believe that what God was doing is he was using Adam's 
process there because even though you may not consider yourself a prophet in terms of the office of a prophet, you are most likely a prophetic person. Do you know why? Because all believers are called to be prophetic people because you have the Holy Spirit living inside mm, of you. Mm. So I sense based on what Adam was saying, as we go into the next segment, I actually believe more than a teaching and more than just us conversing about this, God wants to activate you because I believe there are places in the marketplace, there's places in the nations, there are places that God wants to send you and He wants to take you on a process. He wants to take you on a journey so that you will be a good steward of the power of the age to come that we read about in the book of Hebrews so that you can release that in the here and now. So stay tuned. In this next segment, we are going to actually activate that in Jesus' name. You are watching ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. Welcome back to Something More. I am Larry Sparks, and with my guest Adam Thompson here, I believe the Lord wants us to take this last segment to really activate you. Because mm -hmm. we've been talking about this concept of living in two realms at one, one, one time. And you might be thinking, well, what does that look like practically fleshed out in my everyday life? Here's the deal. God has power. God has solutions. God has wisdom. God has strategy. God has a lot of things that are readily available. You and I were talking about before this show. Mm -hmm. So many of us sometimes approach God in this begging posture, and God does not want you to beg. Heaven has been open for 2,000 years since the day of Pentecost. It's a matter of you accessing what is your spiritual inheritance. And I believe part of that spiritual inheritance is your access to all of that which is in the heavenly realm. So what I want to talk about briefly in this segment is what does it mean? Because so many people say, well, that person is too heavenly minded to be earthly good. That's an expression that people yeah, use. Yeah. I actually believe if we are appropriately heavenly minded, we will be very earthly good because God wants to give wisdom and strategy and invention and innovation, mm. and He wants to entrust that to you. So you, you were talking about how out of a dream interpretation, somebody had a real big breakthrough just in their business. Can you share that testimony? Yeah, well, initially this gentleman, uh, before he got saved, born again, he was a drug addict living in a car. Wow. And he got born again, he got, uh, he, he got into the church system, and, you know, he still wasn't 100% satisfied of where he was at. His life was sort of, you know, in limbo. But he, you know, he, the grace of God's on his life. It's one thing to have the grace of God in your life, and it's amazing. The grace of God is incredible. But to, to fulfill the destiny comes with a mm. price. Mm. See, so the grace of God's free. It's completely free. Yes. You know, salvation's free. But the, the destiny, to walk out God's destiny has for you, can come with a price. So... He had this dream and he brought to Adrian and myself and uh, this one dream, this is going back about eight years ago, and uh, one dream interpretation gave, made him make a decision to go into this partnership, business partnership, and he was, in, he was undecisive at, the, at, at that stage and when he had the dream interpretation, we released it, we prayed for him, he made a decision to go into business uh, building, you know, digging trenches uh, with an excavator. And um, he basically, the long story short, his business grew and went from strength to strength. And he was turning over $4 million a month. Wow, and, wow. And uh, he was really, uh, he was making a, you know, a lot of money and became a great success because of one dream interpretation. And he basically came to a place where he had this revelation what it is to be seated in heavenly places and how to how to cultivate the kingdom uh, from that realm and uh, and actually faith comes from uh, hearing the word but also uh, faith without deeds is dead so yeah. he had to respond to what god gave him yeah. and had to act upon it yes. and through that action and through and obviously hard work too uh, he, t he he's now recently retired. He sold the business, and and uh, but he, you know, God has blessed him financially. Yeah, well, and that's such a practical example of how God wants to do this. Because yeah. as soon as you said that, 
I thought about 1 Corinthians 14, where Paul says to earnestly desire the gifts of the Spirit. And that's our word. As, as we get ready to wind up here, and I'm going to have Adam just minister, and we're going to go as the Holy Spirit directs us. I felt like the Lord wanted you to know, because you're probably asking the question, okay, this, is, this all sounds great. How do I do it? What's like the next practical mm -hmm. step? I sensed the Lord was saying to you, to 1 Corinthians 14, one, earnestly desire, like go after, pursue the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy, because prophecy, I believe, connects you with the power, the wisdom, and the strategy of the age to come. And by the way, prophecy, dream interpretation, the revelatory realm, that is not just for the church world, as Adam was talking about. That is for the marketplace. That's for the medical field. Yeah. That's for media. That's for yeah. wherever God has called and stationed and positioned you. So I sense that that was the thing that the Lord wanted me to say to you, is earnestly desire pray for, ask for, say, God, I ask for the gift of prophecy. I ask to be able to connect with the heavenly realm so that you would open th this revelatory realm to me where I'd be able to start receiving strategies and ideas. Uh, Adam, could you just minister to the folks and, and what, what happens, what practical things can happen to people in, in their everyday lives where, you know, when God opens up that realm to them? Yeah, well, what happens is that uh, God can give you uh, ingenious ideas. You know, you tap into the ingenious mind of God. And you see, f when you look at a, a metaphor of a fish in a dream, uh, when you look at a metaphor of a fish, a fish can mean revelation. Mm. Uh, because when Jesus was uh, at the shore and the disciples were fishing in, in, in John 21, they didn't recognize who Jesus was when they were fishing. They went back to fishing after they had an encounter with Jesus in John 20. And when the, they, they were fishing, the, the, this man on the shore asked him, have you caught anything? And he said, they, the disciples said, no, we have been fishing all night. And he said, well, cast your net on the right side. And they didn't recognize who Jesus was. Mm. But when they had this, the nets full of fish, Yes. They said, that's the Lord. Yeah. It's a revelation yeah. of Jesus Christ. So the fish means revelation. Mm. So in, in, in uh, Matthew 17, when Jesus said, catch a fish, right? He had to pay tax. And he said to Peter, go draw a line, catch a fish, and you'll find a valuable coin. Yes. See, what that means as a metaphor is pursue revelation. Mm. Right? Pursue revelation, and inside that revelation, you'll find some value. You'll yes. find, you'll find uh, ingenious ideas. Yes. You'll tap into witty inventions, uh, Proverbs 8. And I believe there's people out there, mm. that, there's, so, there's so many inventions, even musicians, there's sounds that come from heaven. There's many sounds and wonders out there that people uh, haven't even written yet. And uh, I had an encounter in heaven, another encounter. I do have many encounters of heaven. And uh, I heard music in heaven and the Lord, and I heard this old song, I can sing of your love forever, oh, yeah, yeah. right, when I was in heaven. Yes. And I thought, wow, that's that old song. And the Lord said that was already there mm. before it came to earth. Mm. So I want to encourage you. There's so many songs that haven't been written yet in, uh, yeah. in heaven that haven't been written on earth. There's so many ideas and ingenious inventions that God wants to release to you. And it's not about us having stuff or having success. It's about being intimate with our Father and having influence over nations. Yeah. Can you pray just quickly for the so release? Father, in Jesus' name, we yes. decree yes. through the power of the blood. Right now, there's people out there who are, who are looking for uh, the intimacy of the Father. And we decree right now that through the worship, through their worship, through their intimate time, Lord, I thank you for, for revelations, signs, wonders, and miracles, and they tap into the ingenious mind of God. And I thank you, Father, they're getting witty inventions. Yes. There's songs that haven't been written yet. There's creative ideas. And we release that through the power of the blood yes. and the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us today on Something More. And we trust that that realm of heaven is going to be nearer and far more open to you now, just because I believe you've been connected with a prophetic voice that has the ability to impart that to you. So thank you so much for being with us, Adam. And we thank look you. forward to seeing you next time on Something More.
Have you ever seen a number over and over again and you said, I wonder if that means anything? Maybe you noticed a particular word or sound and you thought, is someone trying to tell me something? Adam Thompson and Adrian Beal want you to know that there is a prophetic language embedded within your daily encounters. Oftentimes, God chooses to speak through everyday signs, symbols, and pictures. Unfortunately, many have not learned how to decode God's prophetic language. Many believers think that God's not speaking to them, but that's simply not true. True. He's speaking to them all the time. Call now and get Adam Thompson and Adrian Beale's revelatory book, God's Prophetic Symbolism in Everyday Life, and their anointed two part audio CD teaching, Recognizing Prophetic Signs, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Plus, you will receive Adam Thompson's powerful book, From Heaven to Earth, yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9514. If you're one who wants to hear the voice of God, well, then this book is a divine appointment for you. Adam and Adrian's brand new book, God's Prophetic Symbolism in Everyday Life, and their anointed and exclusive two-part audio CD teaching, Recognizing Prophetic Signs, will begin to help you hear, see, recognize the voice of God in everyday occurrences, natural incidents, pictures, symbols, and so-called coincidences. Through the book and two-part audio CD series, you will learn how God uses everyday signs like repeating numbers on your clock, license plate, unusual images, occurrences, and so much more as metaphors and symbols to speak directly into your life. Learn how to tune your prophetic senses to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in your dreams and in your visions. The book includes a comprehensive dictionary of symbols. It has quite an in-depth dictionary of symbols and there's something like an average of 15 to 20 scriptures on every symbol. I think it's about 3,000 symbols in this book, God's Prophetic Symbolism. Plus, you will receive Adam Thompson's powerful book, From Heaven to Earth. Through this book, he will help you know your identity and inheritance as a citizen of God's supernatural kingdom, and you will start living this supernatural quality of life right now. Learn how to become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit's voice and hear Him more clearly. Discern the influence of angels in dreams, visions, and divine encounters. Activate your dreams and visions through faith, bringing the invisible into reality. Make evangelism easy through dream interpretation. It's going to open up a whole new world to you. It's going to open up the invisible world. I can't wait to get in your hands their brand new book, God's Prophetic Symbolism in Everyday Life, and Adam Thompson's book, From Heaven to Earth, and the exclusive to CD set, Recognizing Prophetic Signs. Don't miss out on getting Adam Thompson and Adrian Beale's revelatory book, God's Prophetic Symbolism in Everyday Life, and their anointed two-part audio CD teaching, Recognizing Prophetic Signs, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Plus, you will receive Adam Thompson's powerful book, From Heaven to Earth, yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9514. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9514 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.